welcome to another GCSE Economics video with me, Mr. Goff, for MrGoff.com. This video will focus on supply-side policies. So what are supply-side policies? These are any policies that are aimed at improving aggregate supply in the economy. This is really important because as the government pursues its goals of economic growth, if supply is unable to meet increased demand, then instead of getting economic growth, we get demand pull inflation. There are a number of policies that affect aggregate supply. These include infrastructure development, investing in education, reducing direct taxes, reducing benefits, reducing the power of trade unions, promoting competition and privatisation. We're going to take a look at each of these in more detail. Infrastructure is all the basic facilities, services and installations needed for the functioning of a community. Things like transportation and communication systems, water and power lines. Good transport links are essential for moving supplies and finished goods. This reduces costs for firms, allowing firms to supply more at each price. Increasingly, access to high-speed internet connections is important to encourage firms into a particular area. The idea behind investing in education is that better educated workers are more productive. This means we get higher output in the same amount of time. This means average costs are reduced and firms can supply more at each price. Direct taxes are taxes on income, such as income tax and corporations tax. When you reduce income tax, workers are able to keep more of any income that they earn. This incentivizes more people to work who may not have been willing to do so for the lower amount that they were going to be able to keep. For other people, this will mean they're willing to take on extra shifts. Both of these help to increase supply of labor in the economy. This in turn helps to keep wages down and therefore helps keep firms costs down. This allows them to supply more at each price. If corporations tax is lowered, then firms are able to keep more of their profits. This gives them more money to be able to invest with and also provides greater incentives for investment because greater profits can be made. Having lower corporations tax than other countries can be crucial in attracting large multinational corporations. The idea behind reducing benefits is that if benefits are too generous, some people may feel it's not worth their while to work as they do not earn enough extra in a low paying job compared to what they were getting on benefits. Therefore, if we reduce benefits, those people may have an incentive to work, increasing supply in the labour market. This helps to keep the cost of wages down and therefore business costs down, and now they can supply more at each price. Trade unions advocate on behalf of workers for better pay and conditions. If they are having a dispute, they can take industrial actions such as strikes. By reducing the power of trade unions, we might expect to see less industrial action, which means less lost work hours and therefore greater overall productivity. This means firms have lower average costs and can supply more at each price. In addition, reducing the power of trade unions reduces pressure on wages, which also helps firms to keep their costs down and therefore be able to supply more at each price. Fair competition is essential in allowing markets to behave efficiently and effectively. The Competitions and Markets Authority, or CMA for short, are responsible for ensuring competition is fair in the United Kingdom. Amongst their powers is the power to block mergers that would cause a significant reduction in competition. This ensures the number of suppliers is not reduced. Privatisation is where the government sells off public sector assets. The theory is that state-owned businesses are inefficient when compared to private firms who have a profit motive to incentivize them to find greater efficiencies. These greater efficiencies lead to lower costs and a willingness to supply more at each price. That brings us to the end of this video looking at supply side policies and how they work. Join me in the next video when we'll be evaluating the costs of supply side policies. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics and until next time, it's bye for now.